let me bring you to manufacturing sector. Here, we emphasize on product packaging since it is the largest and most rapidly growing category of solid waste. How many plastics actually get recycled? Only 1%. Plastics never biodegrade. Now, allow me to share some green news. The Green Bags is here to change the game with their new technology that allow the bag to decompose 60 days after being discarded. Which means, they don't require expensive recycling or disposal in the landfills. What about bottles? Well, we are pleased to say that there's bio bottle and paper bottle which is 100% recyclable and biodegradable too. Techno and gadget products are using organic waste and biodegradable packaging now. Next, for service providers like port and shipping, how green are they today as compared to the past? We look at the world's busiest port. Let's look at the warehousing. In the past, storing of items were unorganized and perishable items like food were often wasted and thrown away because people could not locate them in a the warehouse. Now, the location of items and empty storage spaces is made visible with the help of IT and RFID technology. Building multi-storey warehouse and building it near to the end customer will provide cost savings on transportation. For transportation, in the past, there is a high rate of empty and unfilled delivery trucks resulting in more trips needed and consuming more fuels and increase in carbon emission. The use of diesel in trucks have also resulted in more carbon emission. So now let us take a closer look at the evolution of energy consumption within companies. In the past, companies are dependent on traditional fossil fuels for their energy supply. However, nowadays, there is an increasing reliance on renewable energy resources such as hydro and solar power. The use of energy efficient light bulbs within factories has also been widely implemented. In-house energy monitoring system has been employed in their manufacturing facilities. In addition, R&D has also enabled companies to reduce the energy consumption and increase the energy efficiency of their products. Next, let us move on to the retailing operations within the company. Products were made recyclable as companies provide used product return progress for consumers. This has successfully kept millions of waste out of landfills. We will now delve deeper into three aspects of the industry and evaluate them. The hub and spoke structure such as the Port of Singapore has characterized the reorganization of transportation networks through the consolidation of freight and passengers at hubs. While the benefits are cost savings, the disadvantages are traffic congestion and higher concentration of noise and air pollution. To mitigate the problems, lots of capital expenditure is required. In addition, hub structures occupy huge amounts of land. Logistics offers efficient door-to-door -door services together with just-in-time strategies. Production, distribution and retailing activities are less constrained by distance now. The more DTD and GIT strategies are applied, the further the negative environmental consequences of the traffic it creates. Service reliability is at the heart of logistics. Its success is based upon the ability to deliver freight on time with the least threat of damage. The logistics industry is built around air and truck shipments, as they are the most reliable and brings customer satisfaction. But they are the two least environmentally friendly modes. Although there are efforts put in by the company to increase energy efficiency, the extent of influence is still too modest in comparison to the large scale of the company's operations. There is much space for them to improve on. One big reason holding them back is the economic factor. The cost for new initiatives to be implemented, the resources needed to redesign the supply chain and to educate their employees or inform their business partners of the change. Currently, green reporting is also becoming an issue as firms' claims of reduced emissions or improved efficiency is hard to verify and often get blown up. After much evaluation on the rising green logistics phenomenon, do we conclude green logistics as a fad or has it gradually become a fad whose importance has been greatly recognised? At the end of the day, are companies willing to prioritise the environment? The push and pull between cost and environmental consciousness came to show what will actually prevail over the other. Despite skepticism over the green logistics phenomenon by environmentalists and stakeholders, we believe that the world is indeed deteriorating at a rate that we can no longer turn a blind eye to. Over the years, there are increasing resources and time dedicated to the development and establishment of green logistics. As Apple has once said, we want to leave the world better than we found it. All in all, we feel that there's a lot of potential to save the earth. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. When more companies come together, our goal should be achieved. Hence, green logistics is a fact, not a fact.